Let us turn to Acts chapter 7, we read from verse 1 to 8. I'm kind of double working and just help me and uh, by just trusting God to speak to us. We thank God that uh, He's the one who provides us the health and He's the one who is guiding all of us. He believes when He leads you, you never go wrong. Hallelujah. Uh, Acts 7 1. Praise the Lord. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charm. Said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Remember, this is calling for separation. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, dwelt in Charm, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land where he now dwelt. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession. There is a promise to be given even for a possession. And to his seed, the seed, very important, after him and when as yet he had no child. Now he's been given a promise even to his children, to his seed, even before he has a child. Hallelujah. And God spake on this wise, in this was that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them four hundred years. And you see, God is leading him that way. And this that the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me. In this place, you may take comfort of all of your sins. Praise the Lord. Now you see here, even as you read from the book of Acts, and we see the Acts, the foundation of Christianity, and as you know here now, God is speaking to Abraham, and if you can look at that verse 8, it says, and he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and that's where I'm going to dwell tonight, and so Abraham beget Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the two patriarchs. Praise God. Now you see there is a promise here that is being given, and here he's being commanded to sojourn, get out of the land he's in, into another land, into a place God is going to give him. So by his grace, as we continue for some few meetings, I'm going to speak on the Holy Ghost. And tonight we want just to lay a little bit of foundation because this is what we've spoken in the past through the message of the token and many other sermons that speaks about the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Now we want to identify what is this Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Who is He? Praise the Lord. What is it? Hope says you cannot receive the Holy Spirit unless you know what it is. In other words, you have no piece of paper can be a paycheck. But when you get that piece of paper, you cannot receive it till you know what a paycheck is. Praise the Lord. So you cannot receive the Holy Spirit unless you understand who the Holy Spirit is. Some people have received a tribal spirit. Some people have received a cultural spirit. Some people have received a ghost spirit. They have spirit some voodoo or juju spirit. But you see, when these spirits come, they may look like they are doing certain acts because we know also the devil can imitate what God has done. And that's why when you see Moses, when he's getting the children of Israel and he's throwing the stick down to turn into a serpent, the magician could do the same. But the difference was the snake of Moses was able to swallow the anna. Because God is more powerful. Praise the Lord. You cannot even receive it if you know what it is unless you believe God has given it to you. Because again, you can know what the Holy Ghost is. 
but you are not going to receive it unless until you accept what it is and is meant for you. Praise the Lord. So you can know something, you can know this is a paycheck, you can know this check is for you, but it's not going to be very important to you until you take it and know that check is for your use. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Finally, you cannot know whether you got it. Now I saw it. I believe it was there. I accepted it. But now how do I know I got it? It's when I take the same check. I saw it. I knew it was the check. Then I knew it was my check. So I accepted it. But after I accepted it, I have to know I got this check when I put this check into an action. Are we together? Amen. I can cross. You pray and go. If you receive a paycheck and put it in your wardrobe and keep it there, it is not helping you. If you see the Holy Spirit and just claim you have the Holy Spirit and you don't press the Holy Spirit into action, it's useless. Amen. Oh, do you love him, friends? Amen. So unless you know the results of the Holy Spirit, what it brings, so we have to know who the Holy Spirit is. We have to accept it for us. We have to receive it when he comes. And we must put him to work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love him, friends? Amen. What it is, who it is, and what action is going to bring to my life. Then I can walk confidently. I receive the check. I walked, I prayed, I received it. I asked her to be mine. I took it to the bank. Now I know it's in the bank. And when I'm broke, when I'm sick, I can go to the ATM and I can withdraw from it and I can put that money to use. And if I was hungry, then I become satisfied. Because I know what I'm doing right now is an action of the very check that I was given by my boss. And in this sense, my boss is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You love him? Amen. God is so good. Amen. So you have to know what you got. And that's why receiving the Holy Ghost requires teaching. That's why we come to church. Amen. That's why we pray. Because we have to be taught how to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to be taught how the Holy Spirit comes. Amen. We have to know when He comes. And we have to know when He comes what He does. So that you can know because the Bible said, by their fruits you shall know them. Amen. What are the fruits? The fruits are the works of God in you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit has been promised and as you look at the patriarchs and look at Abraham that seed that was going to bear and the seed and the seed seed are not seeds oh praise God let's go back to that scripture and go to it from verse one just more on there praise the Lord I want to see where the seed is if you can find it for me my sister just pull verse two hallelujah oh praise the Lord then go to the next verse hallelujah Amen. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed. Not to his seeds, but to his seed. After him. When as yet he had no child. So here the promise is given. And so this promise is not just for that time. It is for them and for the future. Are we together? Amen. Oh, let's keep following. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has been promised. And the Holy Ghost is a sign. Praise our God was saved. You see? And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. 
Now circumcision it was a sign. And when you become a Christian, God is going to give you a sign. You receive a sign and you see a covenant of circumcision and so he begat. Now you see now the generation begins to grow. So now when you come to the what and see in the Old Testament they were circumcised in the flesh. But this time you are being circumcised in the spirit, in the heart, by the acceptance of Christ and who he is. And him comes into you as we will see. Oh, praise God. I was just going to get half an hour and then we can pray. So we can continue eating little by little as the Lord will lead us. Hallelujah. The sign, the promise for a covenant people. So we can call ourselves, we are covenant people. Oh, praise God. And a Christian without the Holy Spirit, and a Christian without the Holy Ghost is just professing to be a Christian. You are only talking about Christianity. Till you receive the Holy Spirit, you are just professing, I am one. But you need confession to receive the Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. When you receive that, you have to hear a voice. And I'm saying the Holy Spirit is a sign. And that's why we talk about the voice of the sign. So there must be a voice. And as you are seeing, Abraham is being called out to leave his country to another country. So you have to hear a voice. And when you hear this voice, you follow. For the Bible says, He that heareth my voice and cometh unto me, I'll give him rest. Now, when God is calling you, when God is calling me, there is a sign is going to give us. And as we saw sometimes, we are following the ministry of our angel and we are following a sign. And there was Mount Sunset. And on Mount Sunset, there was a sign. There was Mount Sinai. And on Mount Sinai, there was a sign. For God himself came down. When the children of Israel were looking to see God, and they told Moses, we want to see God. And God told Moses, go make them ready. Let them come here. For God was on the mountain. And this evening time, God has sent us again a sign. For there says, there shall be a sign. There is going to be the voice of God. Follow the sign. For if the sign is going to lead us, the shepherd followed the sign. The children of Israel followed the sign. That sign was the Holy Spirit. A cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. And they went out of it. When it stopped, when the star of the north stopped, they stopped and the star led them to where is born the king of the world. Oh, praise the Lord. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the Son. And this Son is going to lead you to your maker. He's going to lead you to the new birth. He's going to lead you to Christ Jesus. How much you mean, Lord? God has given us a promise. And when he gives us a promise, he confirms this promise by sending you a sign. And you see the sign brings a covenant. And when the covenant comes, God gives a token Amen. to show that I've made with you a covenant. Amen. When he came and destroyed the world by water, he sent a rainbow. And when now we look at it, he said, I'll not destroy the world again by the floods. But this second coming is coming to burn the world Amen. by the fire. To love you. Amen. God give us a give me Acts 7 to 2. Let's pull it through to really quick. At 10 o'clock, we'll be out of here. So don't go. Just pay attention. Follow me and pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Amen. Acts 7 and 51. The same. Hallelujah. You see, go to us 50. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is asking, had not my hand made all these things? It's gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He is stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. 
He too always insists to the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do he. Stiff necked. Resisting the sign of God. This is the generation we are living in. And you see, circumcision of the heart is the proof today. If you are a Jew, a newborn, on the eighth day, they were circumcised as a sign of their lineage. And as a Christian today, you see, you have to be circumcised. You see, these people, which of these prophets are not your fathers persecuted? Have slain them which should before the coming of the just one. Of whom we have been now, they betray us and murder us. When your neighbor is trying to cast at you, when that brother is trying to put you down, that's still next. Some of them claim to be Christians, some of them claim to be holy. They are coming after you. I want to tell you, friends, there is one hope. Follow the sign. Hallelujah. The silent comes. It brings separation. The voice of God brings a mark. Hallelujah. You are marked. Circumcision is just not you like this. When you are circumcised, it was a mark on you. I remember the woman was in the man was counted in man. So circumcision, when you say circumcision, is not just something you are talking about. There's some shedding of blood. Yeah. And it leaves a mark on you. Yeah. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Holy Ghost, you cannot have a Holy Ghost without the mark of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Are you together? Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a covenant for the bride to have. And circumcision with the Holy Ghost is the type in the New Testament when one was circumcised, it left a mark. Amen. And that mark became the covenant between you and that act and Jehovah God. Amen. And if you are receiving the Holy Ghost, you are claiming to be born again. You've been baptized again. On you, there is a mark. Amen. And that mark is in your spirit. It is in your heart. Amen. But you can feel it. Hallelujah. Amen. A pregnant woman does not just guess what. She can feel it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot be convinced. Salvation is an experience for us. Amen. And as you come in the presence of God, it does not matter how many people are here. There may be thousands or there may be three. One with God Amen. is God's majority. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Circumcision. And to think is a mark. So in the Holy Spirit, you want to know if you have it, then which is a type, which is a covenant, when you receive it, it gives you a mark. Sometimes the mark is painful. Hallelujah. But you know, the pain has a reward. Are we together? Amen. So are we establishing that? That the Holy Ghost is a mark. So it leaves, it's a cut. Something is cut off. The world is cut off. Yeah. Your family is cut off. Yeah. Your job is cut off. Yeah. Your church sometimes is cut off. Yeah. May leave some marks on you. Yeah. But when I go before him, I sing, Oh, must I? I like that song. Oh, the kind of flower, the best of his. When others fought to win the prize, when I'm going into his presence, I can see Meshachai Abednego. I can see them before the Lord. I can see Daniel. Oh, hallelujah. I can see them standing. I can see Steve. Oh, my precious brother. I can see them Martin. I can see them all of them. They are walking in the throne before God. They are marks on their body when they stood. Oh, I can see Paul and Silas. I can see them put into tombs, put into crucifixion. They are going before the Lord. They are marks. They see those marks because they chose Jesus. They chose Christ. Amen. Oh, young men who are listening to me, you must choose Christ. Right. And choosing Christ is not cheap. It's expensive. You have to sacrifice the world. You have to sacrifice
sacrifice your girlfriend. You have to sacrifice your boyfriend. You have to find all the call you call my body bodies. You have to sacrifice them to serve Jesus. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your parents. Oh, glory, glory. To love him. That must on me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, I said to in the days of Lord, so shall it be. Discernment. When the Holy Spirit came in this age, He brought the spirit of discernment. We're going to look at this little by little. Hallelujah. So when the day has come for the circumcision in the heart, oh, praise the Lord, it comes to you and I. And when we receive it, we sacrifice all we have. He went to harass Jesus. You will feel it. You become a nut. You become an old boy. Oh, you are different. Because you have marks on you. You don't work the same. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Give me the book of Galatians. Let me read some more scripture here. Oh, praise the Lord. Give me Galatians. Amen. Let me give me Galatians 3 and verse 16. And you jump to verse 28. Oh, glory to God. Do you love him? Amen. I'm just defining the Holy Ghost. He preach about the token, which is still the Holy Ghost. But we want to say no, we know who he is. And then for next Sunday, we're going to follow up on this. And little by little. Hallelujah now to Abraham and his seed. You see Abraham and his seed. And if you are a royal seed, the seed of Abraham, these scriptures are for you. Because Elijah is come and Elijah is coming. Oh, praise God. And as he has come, you see, now to Abraham and his seed, what the promises made, he said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. Hallelujah. And to thy seed. And you see this promise not given to all the seeds, but the spirit is talking of Abraham's seed. That seed was Christ Jesus. He was the seed of him. But now when you get into him, remember you and him become one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Put me to 28. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I wish I would have just read all of this. And now you see. Now, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. Yes. Praise God. We are one in Christ. No black, no white, no yellow, Spanish, no. No rich, no poor, no educated, no foolish. We are all one in Christ. Jesus, not bondage, no, oh, you, you are slave, oh, you are black, you are white, you are green, so you are not better, I'm better than you, that's in sin, let me tell you, rest is a sin, rest is not the presence of God, you see, academia and all these things, some people looking at each other down, because I have a better job, you don't have one, I come from a rich family, I live in America, I live in a better state, I'm this and that, you are doing that because you are living in flesh because I know the Bible God the presence let the rich be poor and the poor be rich and when you come into his presence we shall be the same remember Jesus at 10 15 20 he was there walking like one of us he was a child like us he was a carpenter in the father Joseph in the flesh doing carpentry work and when he walked with us in flesh he was like you and I that's why the prophet said he was a man when he went down there he went to the tree and he was hungry and he wanted to eat a fruit of it, he was feeling hungry because he was a man. But when he stopped and cut down that tree and said that no man is out of this tree, he was more than a man. The prophet tells me again when he walked to Lazarus' grave and he saw them, Martha and Mary, they were all crying. He was a human being like you and I. He was with feelings, he was in this service, and he looked at Lazarus' death. And the Bible says, and Jesus wept because he was human. But when he stood on that grave and called out and said, Lazarus, come forth. He was more than a man. He was more than the flesh we saw. He was a man when he was on that sea. He was tired, lying on that ship, wanting to get some rest. Oh, he was the God in flesh. 
But when he was there tired after preaching the whole day and the waves came, oh praise God. When he woke up from that trip and he stopped the waves, he was more than a man. He was God himself. William Branham was a man like you and I when he walked on the streets of America. But when he stood in Colorado and looked at the storms and said, Storm, stop. He became the spirit of Joshua. Stand, stop. Stand still. Did I get this picture I need? When you see the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, much greater than works shall you do. Those are the works of the Holy Spirit. When he came down in the evening day, as he was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, he came in the flesh, in the human flesh. He brought the spirit of even discernment. In the evening time, Jesus, hallelujah, came back again. And he's showing you, if I receive the Holy Spirit, I'm not bothered with men and women say. I'm not bothered with a child. I'm not bothered when I'm sick. Because I'm not being sick and be. I am a man. I take some antibiotics. Sometimes I take some calcium because I'm a human being. But I'm telling you, when they press me under six feet, I'm still going to hear that voice. When he calls me, it was not going to be this flesh. It's going to be him. Because I'll never die. Jesus never died. And you never die. Receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. Do you love your friends? Oh, I feel religious. I feel very good. Oh, verse 29. Where was I? And if ye, you, 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 if ye, if ye be cast. What a confidence. What a hope. What a consolation. Then are ye Abraham's seed. Oh, praise God. Our elder brother Saul has sons. And their sons. He's my friend. We joke around. I play with him. But when he goes to the village and he begins to share the stuff, I'm not part of that inheritance. It does not matter how good I am. It does not matter how good, nice I am with him. When it comes to that inheritance, I have no right to it. Are you together? Amen. I'm not part of that lineage. But that lineage is known. The village knows. Hallelujah. The family knows. So if you be cast, if you be cast, it's saying you, 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 if you be. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are in America, you pay tax. So if you be in America, you pay tax. If you don't pay, you go to prison. Hallelujah. So if you be, so if you be, if you think you are, if you think you have the Holy Spirit, then you should know who the Holy Spirit is. You should know when the Holy Spirit comes. And you should know it is for you. Amen. And you must know how to receive him. Amen. And when you receive him, you must confirm I have him. Amen. When you are sick, the backache is there. Amen. The headache is there. Amen. The children are crying. But I know I have the Holy Spirit. Amen. The devil is speaking to you. But God is speaking to me more. Amen. Because the devil comes at your lowest moment. Amen. The devil talks to you when things are falling apart. Amen. The devil talks to you when you are hungry. Amen. The devil came to Jesus. Uh, you know how you say you're a child of God. Oh, you are this and this. You know the Bible, you believe. God said, if you know this, you bring something, you'll just take care of you. If you can just watch, you see the devil in you. The devil knows. The devil knows when you are down. The devil knows when you've lost. The devil knows when you are crying. Yeah. And the devil begins to talk to you. But when the devil is talking to you, yeah. I want you to know the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Amen. The devil can speak to a preacher. Yeah. The devil can talk to your husband. Yeah. The devil can talk to your wife. Yeah. The devil can come to your children. Yeah. Still the dead. Yeah. Bible says to him in bed. One will go. The other will be left. The fact that your husband or your wife come to China does not make them believe us. Some of them are doing evil things. Some of them are daughters, yeah. fornicators, yeah. defilers, thieves. Yeah. And I 
in charge. Good on you. Some of them are preachers. Help me out. Flow into strength. Pass according to the promise. You must get a mark. The Holy Ghost only comes. If you have the Holy Ghost, then you have the mark. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you are circumcised, you cannot use the word I'm circumcised. What do you mean? You are insane. When you tell you I'm circumcised, what do you mean? There's something that makes you say that. When you tell people I'm a Christian, what do you mean? What's Christianity? What is it? It says if you be Christ, Christ is Christ like. If you be Christians, then ye are Abraham's seed. And Abraham's seed was given a promise with a covenant. And that promise had been given a sign. And that sign is circumcision. And that circumcision is a mark on the flesh. So the cutoff is a separation. The Holy Ghost is not an imagination. The Holy Ghost is a reality. The Holy Ghost is an individual experience. The Holy Ghost is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not because I can roll. I've seen brothers rolling on the floor and crying and rolling on the floor in prayer. And they went back and were backbiters and great backbiters. I've seen brothers and sisters going into fast, scraping the church, come down and fighting their own wives. Some of them divorced. Some of them chasing their children out of their homes. No love experience. Do they see the Holy Ghost? I don't know. God, I must know. You must know the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a mark. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is a sign. And when you receive him, you are more humble. Amen. You treat your brother better than yourself. Amen. Your sister better than yourself. Amen. Because you tell your eternal life is living and dying for others. Amen. Oh my. Yes. According to the promise. And child, there's so many scriptures out there. But if I need them, we will not close today. It's Friday, so we need to pray for a few minutes. Then we can go home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no, neither Jew, nor Greek, born or free. We have seen from that scripture, verse 28. Neither man or female, but ye are all one. Go back to the end. Ye are all one. Where? In Christ Jesus. Amen. So if I'm here and I'm the President of the United States, yes. There's no president, poor or rich. We are all one in Christ Jesus. In his presence, we are identified by the work we do in his house. Amen. Not the flesh. Flesh just makes me good. <laughs> i get an extra million in my check. Just makes me feel good. Sometimes make me become a little Sometimes it makes me come a little proud because I have seen some religion. But that is in flesh. That does not make me a better Christian. Hallelujah. Oh my. Praise the Lord. Let me skip that scripture there. Circumcision and the mark we are talking about brings a cognition that you have faith in God. It means you take God's word regardless of the circumstances. The circumstances you are in. Praise the Lord. God's word becomes fast. God's word is number one. Amen. Let me tell you, if God told you to do something, to love your wife, to love your husband, young boys and girls, the Bible says to respect your parents. That's God's word for you. 
If you are young, respect your mama, respect your papa. And if you do that, you are already starting to fear the word of God. You live many years. But because I think I'm much better, you see, when you see the Holy Spirit, it leads you into God's word. Praise the Lord. It brings to pass the promise of God. It brings to pass the life of God in you. Give me Ephesians 4 30. Because it talks of the Holy Spirit. I'm closing. We're going to pray. As I said, I just prayed for five minutes. That's good enough. We continue when we have enough time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can somebody someone say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has sealed unto the day of when you become old, when you die, when you are rich, when you are poor, until the day of you are sealed. And I have not enough time to go and talk the Holy Ghost. Is rest. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a sin. Amen. You are sinned. This sin, you see, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sinned. In other words, that Holy Ghost is your sin. You are sinned by the Holy Spirit. And that's why we don't, don't not grieve it. Don't make the Holy Ghost be a note. The Holy Ghost becomes a note. When sin comes around you, when you become rebellious, when you go against the word of God, when you refuse to follow God, the Holy Ghost, when it comes, it makes the promise of God become true to you. And you see, it gives you the seal of God, even to the day of your redemption. To the day when you see Jesus, Face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are completely sealed. Marked. Blocked. In the life of Christ. Amen. It's a sign for you. And God has given it to you as a covenant. The Holy Spirit becomes our assurance. Amen. Becomes our protection. Becomes our witness. Amen. When I'm fighting and I'm struggling, the Holy Ghost is there. That's why the Bible says if you go before the courts, or oh, when you are going for those interviews, when you are going for that boss meeting, when you are going to that situation, don't worry what you're going to say. Yeah. When you are going for that exam, Amen. pray, wait upon God, Amen. and let God know. Let the devil know how things work for them that love God. Even if you fail the exam, thank God. Don't become distressed. Sometimes we fail and we become distressed. We become frustrated. We feel God doesn't love us, but God still loves you. Amen. Because I can do all things, not some things. Even in failure, I'm still with God. Amen. I'm still in choice. In distress, I'm still in choice. I'm telling you, the devil talks to you at your lowest moment. When the landlord, when the mortgage, when the institution, when all those things are coming, and you are coming from Africa, someone's telling you, oh, your hand is about to die. They are so sick, we need the money. I know you don't have it. And they're feeling, oh, mother aunt, oh, mother cousin who is in Africa, just getting this much, and you are in America. What are you doing? They are talking to you. They are making you become useless. And they are quoting for you. They are telling you the other son of the other man came to America. He just did this and he bought the father a new car. Oh, he has a BMW. And you've been there for 10 years. We don't see nothing. Ah, uh, you bewitched. What's wrong with you? Then you go into the house. You begin to fight with your wife. You begin to fight with your husband because you are feeling you are foolish. You are not foolish because you are not corrupt. You love God. Amen. God knows you. Amen. God cares for you. Amen. God knows what is needful for you. Amen. God 
wants to encourage you. God is caring. He's seeing you. He's the Alpha and Omega. Receive the Holy Spirit. No temptations. Tempted and try. We often may to wonder why it should be oh, that all day long when we try to do the best others do wrong and they seem to be doing better but with us in church every Sunday in church every Friday in the morning pray and I'm not breaking through that Pentecostal friend of mine who is doing this and this he seems to be breaking through he seems to be driving the best vehicle he seems to be living in the best place he seems to be having a successful family what's wrong with me what's wrong with what I believe but I'm serving God I'm in church what's wrong with me there is the devil talking to you brother sister the devil is talking through to your husband the devil is talking to you to the wife your wife is making you become limited and small. Like you are just a cast man. Hallelujah. The devil went up to heaven. And when the sons of God went up to meet him. And the devil sneaked in. And many times the devil has the best answer. He has the best idea how to do it. He'll tell you how to make some more money. He's going to tell you how to succeed and survive. The devil has the best idea. But for short limited. That's why you need not the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is talking to you and when the devil is talking to you. Amen. Oh my. I'm feeling good right now. Amen. Because I can hear sometimes when the devil is talking. Amen. A friend of mine at work called me today and was accusing his friend. And told me, this guy just told this because I know he hates the guy. Then I asked him, you're sure? Sometimes, here where we are, this young man knows how the cameras work. We have some cameras in here. Cameras don't tell lies. I've seen people do stuff and they deny completely, but they don't come. This is how man sometimes sees. You are going to prison. See, hatred. Ask the man, are you sure? One thing, if you go and pull the cameras and you are wrong, you are fired. They told me, no, I don't just want to take away, just leave it alone. Because he knows that. The devil is trying to destroy. The devil is a liar. Amen. The devil will tell falsehood on you. Yeah. The devil will reduce you. Yeah. Make you feel useless. Yeah. But I'm telling you tonight. Amen. I'm speaking to you tonight. Then you can hear this voice. Don't be distracted by the devil. Amen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Identify who the Holy Spirit is. Amen. He is our seal. He is our witness. He is our sign. When I get it, I know I am heaven bound. You believe, son, this Bible is not my hope. <laughs> I fly away, oh glory, I fly away, when I die, when I die, I will not know it, how one good friend, I was talking to my wife as we came, our young little brother who went to be with the Lord himself, tonight, this morning, he's going to be buried, he was a good friend of mine, he had the best education in computer science, he came this country, was doing so very well, but the devil, the liar, came into that life, tried to mess that life, and in my thing, I'm thinking, maybe God took that life, to avoid him going further and further. This young man who was smart, one of the intellectuals in computer, here he is. That life tonight, he's going to go six feet, he's done. What's the life for? Call this young man from DC, he's gonna get into my computer and fix the problems in a minute. I didn't worry about it when he was there, he could communicate. All I need to do is just to pick the phone and call Brother Rock. Are you there? Yes. Give me the seal. Things will be done in a minute. When I visited the office, it was home. You took three doors to get in there because of the security, cyber security. Where secure doors? You wouldn't see him in his office. 
They're going to come to where you are. Secured rooms. Very educated. Friends, let's know who the Holy Ghost is. I don't know when my day cometh. You don't know when your day cometh. This flesh is going to die. Yeah. The things we passion in. Yeah. The things we do, we feel we can't do without. In this flesh, time comes, this flesh becomes very useless. For the Bible and the prophets say, time is coming. People are going to rot in this flesh. And they are going to cry for them to come for them. Go in the first resurrection. But then they will deny you. People have money, but money cannot help them. Remember that rich man? Called Papa, there was no Papa. Mommy, there was no Papa. There was a bridge in between there. He couldn't cross over. Do your reservations tonight. Pray as you mean it. Say, God, if your wife is not praying, pray. If your husband is not praying, pray. Don't even fight. You are not going together. You may be married. You are married, but you are not born the same hour. You were born a different day, fresh. You are born to be just met. You are husband and wife. But when time comes, still till death, you are together. When this man called death comes, you'll be separated. And sometimes I've seen men say, I love, I love, and when the wife died, they marry another woman. They marry another man. What happened? That love is limited. But when you see the love of God, when the Holy Spirit comes into me, He is my assurance. He is my protection. He is my witness. He is my sin. Even if I'm sick, the Holy Spirit is going to seal me. Not till the day I put into the grave, but into the day of my redemption. When I wake up to sleep no more, when I stand up to see my Lord, the Holy Spirit will speak to me. He'll be there for me. For it's not I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Let me tell you, friends, tonight, if you can discover who we are, we don't think about the pastor, we don't think about the church, you don't think about the household, you are going to think about yourself. Yes, my children, I have them, I love them, but they have to cry and cry and cry for their own salvation. Time comes, my children will walk away from the house, they are going to go into the home, they are going to go to their jobs, they may go to another state, they may move around from away from me, but if they have crossed, if they have the Holy Spirit, wherever they are, I'm going to be with them. Yeah. My prayer for them is just not to get better jobs, just receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead them to their jobs. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God have mercy on us. God help us. Thank you, Jesus. Our time is complicated. It's 1 14. From verse 10, we need more scripture. And of course, I need the scripture of Sunday God. Hey, oh, do you have him? Amen. The pastor said, when man was calling me to I was crying like a baby. Oh, my dad is not very really good. I want to go to Canada and get some sky to send to Africa. Oh, I have this. Oh, my baby. He was crying. Because life has become so difficult. And they want to kill themselves. Life is hopeless. We preach a lot. We 
court a lot. But how much of it is in my court when I'm walking? Amen. How much courts am I having when I'm talking to my wife? How much courts am I having when I'm sitting in my office? How much of it? Whatsoever I shall ask in my name, that will I do. If you are asking his name and you believe in him, he says that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, when the Father is being glorified, now you are putting the works of God in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever I shall ask. And remember, God will always give you your need. He may not give you what you want, but he has already answered. You may not see it, but God may change you to the shape. He wants you to humble yourself. To you love him? Amen. Hey, amen. Hey, Next, I'm going to do this on that. If he shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Amen. Hey, can I can I interpret that? Interpret for yourself. If you will. And tonight, as you go to speak to him, you know you have to focus. One man said, if you are one, if you want to get a bat, a bear in the air, and said strong, the board, right? Hallelujah. You have to put your focus on the wind. You have to make sure that you hit the wind. So if you are looking for something to God, you must focus on your belief and faith in God. They have a quack, 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 quack. There are a lot of noise around, but put your focus on the faith you have in God. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. My command is believe in him. Fear God and keep his commandments. If you love him, them that he loveth, the righteous of God, they cannot fail because you are his. How can I have this hand suffer and I don't care? How can I have this leg? That's why I go to the hospital. That's why I call for help. Because it's part of me. You are part of Jesus. Amen. Jesus cannot allow you to suffer Amen. when he's watching. Amen. No. If you love me, keep my commandments next. And I will pray the Father. And he shall remember. So you have to love him. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We are praying for the Holy Ghost, but we don't love him. Hallelujah. We are praying for the feeling, but we don't love him. We are asking God to help us, but we don't love him. We are asking him to be with you, but we don't love him. So if he love me, keep my commandments. We want him to bless us, but we are not keeping the commandments. We are hitting your wife. We are backbiting. We are casting out there. You are a hypocrite. Oh, you are looking at women. You are looking at men. You are doing certain things. But we want him to bless you. This is the word. I pray the Father. Because you love him, you are keeping his commandments. So we have read the scripture in life. I don't want to quote so here and there. Let me read the scripture and see what is bringing what. I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. In other words, he knows you'll be uncomfortable. He knows sometimes things come in there distress. That's why he's praying. That's why he told Peter, when you get converted, strengthen your brethren. You see, I said, he said another comforter that he may abide with you forever, all the time, in good times, in bad times. Next, he'll abide with you. Even the spirit of truth. Oh, the scriptures are so sweet. Whom the word cannot receive. But talk about receiving him. Because it's here the not, neither knowing the not, but ye know him. And as I say, you must know the Holy Spirit. Jesus is addressing them that know him. Amen. This promise is to them that know him. Amen. This promise is to them that will receive him. Amen. Not to the world. So this promise, that covenant of Abraham was for them that had marks on them. The one that was circumcised. Them that have received the circumcision of the heart. Them that know who Christ he yeah, are Christ. Those who belong to Christ. Then he's promising you. He's going to send you a comforter. The one who not know him, but you know him because you love him, because you keep his commandments. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 
He was with us, with them in flesh. But in the evening time, I go for a little while, and for a little while I'll come back, and I'll be with you, even in you, to the end. And that's why the Holy Ghost is your seal Amen. until the day of your redemption. Is Jesus in you? He's going to dwell with you and shall be in you to the end as your seal, as your redemption, as your atonement. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I have to stop. We just say we'll stop. I have to go up to uh, verse 21. I'll stop there. That's too long. You can read it up to one at home. Let's rest on our feet. Hallelujah. Sorry for this. I took more than I thought. But all is well. I read one scripture here. What is the Holy Spirit? One quote. That's all. What joy. Did you notice in Acts 2, Peter took up the verse and said, Ye men of wisdom, hear my words. These are not drunk. This shield comforted. Peculiar. Marked people. They are not drunk. As you suppose. Acts 2. Seeing that ye, this is the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken of by Joel the prophet, saying, It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What is it? What is the Holy Ghost? All right, now let us notice again. Promise to the believers. That's what it is. This Holy Ghost, we find out what it is. Just a minute. Who is it promised to? To believers. Oh my, it's promised to believe us. We we'll take it up. That call from there. Call me on Sunday. Where is my sister in the music place? If you can pray for me that song, When the Lord is called a pion. Give me that song. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Amen. Do you love him? The Holy Ghost. Point number one. As you are going home, how you been circumcised? Has the flesh been cut off? Hallelujah. Has the skin come out? Do you have a mark? If you don't, run to the bush. In Africa, sometimes it's by some position. Oh, praise God. Make some noise. Thank God. Hallelujah. Give me the two verses. Do something. Get the mark, young guys, get the mark. Young boys, get the mark. Walk into the presence of God. Let God be your anchor. Let God be your strength. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more. What he's going to look for is going to look for his spirit. He's going to look for the Holy Ghost. He's going to look for himself in you. Hallelujah. Seek for him tonight. Come to yourself to him. Oh, yeah. 
just care for you. Oh, heaven is come. That day is coming for me. Want you my name? I was going to pray right now. I was going to pray right now. As the song comes to pray. Oh, Lord, the times are taking 
you, Lord Jesus, for this moment you have to get in fellowship, oh God. May you bless my young brother. May you give him grace and wisdom as he desires to stay with him. Father, may you be his teacher to send him to the gospel, to study the word of God, to know what the word says for the youth and the lifestyle.
that side. What is your destination? When that day cometh, Jesus is calling. What will you give in exchange for this? What will you tell him you did with your life? What will you tell him you did with your life? Because time cometh. For God is a God of judgment. It's a just God. But that time shall come, my sister. To stand before you. What will you tell him? Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for that. Thank you once again for this time. We thank you for the prayers of the saints of God. We want to dedicate each and every of them unto your hands, God. Those who open their lips, we spend a word of prayer before you, Lord. May those prayers be sweet for you. Sweet someone before thee, O God. May they be joined together, O God. And the testimonies may come from you. Let we serve our living God. For he answers your prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the little children, for the middle ones. As we go to our homes, as we drive, Lord. And if there be a Sunday for us, we gather again, oh God. May you prepare a table for us, oh God, as we come before you, Lord. That we may hear even from thee, oh God. I commit my life to thee, oh God. I'm not worth you, oh God. Father God, I need you every hour, every minute of my life, oh Jehovah. May your strength be my anchor, oh God. The words I've spoken, Lord, is not I, Lord. I just read from the scriptures, oh God. May I be like the man I'm holding my hands. Have you able to take these scriptures and give it to your children? Thou, thou alone, Lord, you speak them, O oh God. May that voice of Elijah, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that purify, walk with us, come with us. Bless us, O oh God, as we seek your kingdom and your face. And we'll be able to see you face to face in your glory. Today, the day of our redemption. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the moment of service. We commit all things at your hands. May you dismiss us with your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God be with you till we meet again. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen.